There was a couple of bumps in the sound at the beginning. I was going crazy in the back, but it, it got resolved at the end. Um, I'm wondering, can we bring up some of the cast and the guys? Is that is that is that Yeah, yeah, uh, Sikando, uh, Vipin, uh, Shalto, uh, everyone in the cast, please, please, come on stage, please, please. Um, Sikando. Jordan, where's Jordan? Ian, when? Joe, Joe Thomas, Sam. Come, come, guys, please, please. Sharon, Sharon, the DP, Sharon. Sharon. Come up, yeah, uh, how do we get that? <laughs> <laughs> They're coming, sorry, sorry. Civilized. Look at this man. How drunk are you right now? <laughs> Give it up for Charlotte. about my love of all the action films. So my granddad, um, he, used to, he used to live in Kenya, and when he used to come to London very, uh, yeah, um, for, he used to, we used to sit in bed and he used to tell me the story of Hanuman um, from the mythology of the Ramayana. And he's kind of like a subsidiary character. There's so many other characters, but he really captivated me. And he's kind of been like a sort of emblem for my father and kind of the men in my family. He's sort of like, if you go to a gym in India, there's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like Ronnie Coleman and Hanuman on the gym. <laughs> and uh, what baffled me is that when I started growing up, like that iconography of this like, you know, this being that was super strong, could hold mountains in one hand, split, split their chest open. You know, it reminded me of the iconography of like Superman and et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, God, this is amazing. I wish the world knew about it. And I was like, Maybe we can ground this and do something with it because when you go deep into it, he's sort of a guy that lost faith in himself uh, and had to be reminded of who he was. And so that's kind of the inkling. And then my love of um, like Bruce Lee films, you know, that you see Game of Death and the whole concept you see in Raid is working your way up a, a building of some sort. And I really wanted to kind of touch on the caste system in India and the idea of like you have the poor at the bottom slaving away in these kitchens. Then you go up to the land of the kings and then above them is, you know, God, you know, a man-made God that's, you know, polluting and corrupting religion. And then you have heaven um, where he kind of sort of meets his mother at the end. So, yeah. Amazing. I realize you didn't want to have a comment of all the mics out here. Can we bring out our other mics and hand them out? Um, can we talk a little bit about how each of the people that you brought up, I'm so sorry, <laughs> I didn't know the list, um, how you got involved in the pro project, what the process of you being cast was? Yeah, I mean, there's so many actors I, w I wish were here as well, but um, so... Shalto, I think we, we had dinner once and he asked me a very simple question, Shalto, and then I think I pitched it to you for like three hours, like seeing the scene. Yeah, he was pitched like, the whole thing from the yeah. beginning. He literally started pitching the shots. And I was like, wow, I don't understand, yes. So I was like, okay. And uh, I really, I, I really am blown away, Dev. It's the first time that I've seen it. Yeah, these guys haven't seen it, yeah. It's, 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 like pretty, said, it's pretty crazy. crazy. It's like, I had a feeling like this guy's gonna be a real auteur, like from the way he was pitching it, but I'm really pleased to say that uh, 
It's exactly as I like sort of imagine. You, you, I pay you, him to you, say you, that. You're gonna be no, you're gonna be something incredible. Well, I'm still stunned. I'm like, yeah, oh man, this is your night. And then Vito Bash. I mean, he was. Charisma can be packed in this size of an individual, but I, I wrote the part for Peter Bash, uh, and we'd, we'd known each other a bit, and so that was his, and all the jokes just flowed from there. Sikandar, funnily enough, you know, now he's a huge star in India, but you know, he, he, you know, he came to us in an open casting call, so did Shobita. And Sikandar came with a plastic bag full of like a police costume and everything and but did they, the whole thing. But they wrote that role for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he was great and when the film was like kind of going away and blah blah blah, I was on the island and I had this thing, I was like, oh my god, that guy, Sikandar. And he came in and we trained and beat the shit out of each other. Uh, <laughs> He beat me up, he broke my hand, he's the one that did that. Um, and then Shobita came in and just blew us away with her cast. Yeah. You know, she's just a, a force and she holds pain so beautifully and the camera obviously loves her as does everyone in this room I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> Sammy and me, uh, you know, he's, he's the producer that's worked with me for a very long time uh, from Marigold Hotel onwards and we started a company. Vipin, I did a film called Hotel Mumbai with and he, he was absolutely phenomenal and I just, for me, he just is, he's soulful, you know, and he's, he's such a kind, beautiful human being and so Alpha, he was always my Alpha and, um, and then Joe over there is, you know, been with me from day one. Without him, I would be lost. He's my own man. You know, after the ADHD hyperactive dude, he's been there for months and months. I would be lost without that individual. And Sharon, you know, we were here in the middle of a pandemic and we were, you know, and I'd always remembered his work from Whiplash, um, which was just fantastic. Um, You know, we immediately got along and we're like a, we're like a married couple, you know, like we, there's so much love, bickering all the time, whatever, but actually he's always down and game and we, I mean like there wasn't a single piece of camera equipment, right, that worked, right, like it was, it was, it was so bad, oh you got a mic, anyway, uh, um, true. and so like that, that shot, remember in Diwali where the camera's like swinging over the people, we didn't have, the crane broke. So I was like, fuck, what do we do? So we're like, let's put it on a rope, let's swing it. And then, and then we're just trombing each other. I'm like, what if we could detach it whilst they're swinging and then run through the crowd? And it's just like constantly we're, we're trying to find a way into the fights, in, you know, under the armpit of the action and then like find a different calibration. And we're, you know, the drumming scene that you see, the Indian classical kind of bag thing, we shot that, you know. That, that man is Ustad Zakir Hussain, who played with Ravi Shankar and the Beatles. And, um, you know, there's, a, there's an individual called Raghu who was with me. For, he couldn't be here today, but he was like by my side as well from day one. And he was a big fan of Indian classical music. And it's sort of a, it's not a dying art form, but it's like certainly not in the zeitgeist in India. And I was like, okay, let's take that, revitalize it. And, give these guys our rocky sequence with some social context and, and make it a kind of jazz musical call and answer. So that's where that came from. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we like, we, you know, we started in India and then went down, went to the island, you know, uh, you know, we, two weeks before production, it, we were getting called that we were going to be shut down, COVID, it was madness and we just constantly, it was like a process of ferocity and to get it done. But yeah, we're here, yeah. And, Fuck yes you are. Um, I was gonna ask, when did you know that it was time for you to step behind the camera? Have you always wanted to be a director? But I feel like just from listening to you, maybe it was forever. No, actually, not, not actually, to be honest, it was like, um, again, it was like just, you know, I was just trying to find a way to tell this story, like I wanted it out there. And originally, I 
I hired a friend to write it, that was hard, and then I ended up like co-writing it, and then we like hid it in a, a, a coffee shop in Koreatown in LA for a year, driving my manager and everyone crazy because I didn't take any work, and we're just like, I want to get the vibe of like the Korean films in me, and I'm like, we're writing all day. Um, and then from there, I we did a film together, Chappie, and I, 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 I was pitching, I went to, I went to Neil Blomkamp originally, and me and Neil started talking, and then Neil's like, you know, man, you should do this. Like, you know every corner of it. And, and I was like, no, I can't do it. He's like, no, you can. You can do it. And then it kind of, um, I was like, oh, okay. And so it kind of, it just, I kind of reluctantly got pushed into the driver's seat and it unfolded from there. <laughs> Prepared for this level of stunt work and. Sekanda? <laughs> First, I just want to say that you guys really love me. I could hear every time I come. I haven't felt so much love in my life. Thank God my mom wasn't here. <laughs> but uh, no, man, I mean, what? It was actually, honestly, one of the toughest shoots, I think, for everybody um, that went through this. Not only the COVID and the lockdown, but the training that we were doing, uh, the kind of action that we did, the way that uh, Brahim, the, uh, the, the, the action coordinator, he built the sets in this room and I would just constantly go there every day just so that, you know, I would be able to match up with this boy. It was so insanely awesome, you know. And, uh, I, didn't ima I didn't imagine it, you know, like I'm sure most of you all didn't imagine that he'd be so awesome. <laughs> I swear. And uh, I'm like, dude, man, I gotta stand up to this guy, I gotta get like some kind of action and style in his way. So I just remember going there constantly every single day and just, and he was doing it on his own and then we just went on set and it just, I think it just happened. We faced like catastrophe every day. Like, you know, from starting in India, then going to Indonesia, we, we were originally going to have this amazing you know, Hollywood stunt team, and then the borders closed and we didn't have anyone, so I was like, shit, what do we do? We went on YouTube, started looking at videos, we found Raheem, and he was in Thailand, and that border was still open, so we're like, hey man, can you come, like, tomorrow? And he's like, okay, and he came down with a couple of his, his guys, Kula and Yuna, um, and Raheem was great, and then he had a guy shooting on a little camera, some pre in the stunt room, and now I'm spending really early mornings training with these guys before I go into all these production meetings and I was like wow this guy Steven is really interesting because he's a stuntman holding a camera so I'm like Sharon I've got this idea let's get Steven to like start being one of the operators in the action sequences so it was never a duet it was it was a threesome <laughs> Steven knew where I was going to be for, before I was so he if you see some of those movements and stuff and like in the brothel we're, we're passing the camera around the credenza and across hey, and the brothel is with me yeah, yeah that was you too no no you were on it too but, yeah, but like um, you know so that was like that was crazy and then yeah I mean what else can we say like there was, I, I would, there was, uh, there was a lot of chapters like there were challenges every week one thing about that is that he doesn't shy away from a brave heart speech every week. <laughs> so, everything is down here that stand up, stands up on the table and does this insane speech and everybody's like, okay, let's, let's get back into it. Yeah, every week. I mean, know. like, we lost our production designer who couldn't fly in because of COVID and the guy that was facilitating, the local facilitator, Pawas, I was like, Pawas, you got, you're on, you're going to production design. So he became the production designer and he blew it out of the park, you know. Um, you know, there were so many actors that couldn't fly in, so the guy in the wheelchair, he's the tailor. Like, you know, like we, every single person you see in this is like an accountant or a tailor or someone that was in this, in this film. Our dear, you know, jokes aside, our dear gaffer, UD, died in the middle of shoot from a heart attack and that ripped a cannon through all of our chests and, um, you know, like there was, there was just like all of these things, but like we really were a huge family out there. And every time there was an obstacle, I didn't have a camera. I take my mobile phone in the tuk tuk. So one of the shots you see when it gets crashed is my mobile. You saw that the horrible pixelated stuff underwater. That's my mobile. That Joe shot. I put my own makeup on in the in the in my bathtub. Um, but it was it was constantly we were you know 
that tuk tuk be the bash. Tell them about Oh my god. <laughs> Man, horrible tuk tuk it was. Like, I'm like, you try to drive it anywhere, but it'll always go right. <laughs> okay. So, and we are shooting in a live market, people are walking around. Three big people sitting behind with a 40 kilogram of camera and Dave is constantly looking at the monitor, right? So, no, 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 don't stop, go, 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 go. I said, like, I'll murder people <laughs> because it's going right. I cannot we get cancelled now. So, yeah, it worked out well. <laughs> And then, um, you know, talking of stunts, so yeah, I, I, I broke my foot two weeks before shoot, my toes and stuff, that was painful, and then <laughs> tore my shoulder, and then in the middle of that bathroom fight, like on day one or two, day two, I broke my hand, and that was like, okay, here we go again, production's gonna go down, and back on the internet, because I was like, I can't wear a cast for this whole movie, we don't have the budget to, you know, shoot, you know, paint this out. So we had this COVID protocol and we found a cheap like medical jet that wouldn't break the bubble. I finished shooting that whole night and my hand was like an elephant's hand. You can see it in the film, there's some wraps sometimes, that's from the surgery. We got on a plane, they put a screw in and the doctor's like, you cannot put any pressure on it because it's like, if it bends this nail, uh, it'll be like pulling a bent nail out of wood. You'll just ruin your hand. And I'm like, okay, doctor, got it, copy. Went straight back into the action scene <laughs> calling and, put a, and put a nail through your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so all of the choreo had to change to, like, if you've seen the kitchen fight, I was way better than I'm doing it all one-handed now. And so it's crazy, but yeah. This is, all, like this is all true, by the way. This is all true. <laughs> you said that the screw still exists. The actual screw. The crew made a t-shirt. It. It. it was the one screw that screw. kept the production alive. <laughs> schizophrenic process like acting and, 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 and you know directing and basically the, the mission was shoot the coverage on the actors and they were so good that sometimes they would even allow me to do a scene where I'm del delivering my lines and watching them so I can make sure that they're covered right they would nail it and then right at the end I would just like run my, my shit at the end of the scene um, uh, but these guys you know you, when you're dealing with acting partners this good a huge amount of, of, of um, trust went into Sharon and just, you know, you know, how he would, you know, the relationship we had and the comfort I had with him just being in every location scout and, you know, he, he exhaled when I inhaled and vice versa and it was kind of perfect, like it was a, it was a beautiful symbiosis by the end, so he's, he's, he's a real maestro, this man. <laughs> to create a lead who is willing to truly fight dirty. Oh man, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I've got a sick brain. And um, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, well, well, you know, wouldn't it be great if you could, uh, the same guy that can't, you know, jump through a window, uh, could also just bite a knife into someone's neck and, uh, uh, yeah, fun. you know, there's a lot, a lot of like cultural touchstones, like Diwali being the festival of light, him creating these homemade fireworks to use on that evening and it, you know the, the list goes on really um but uh yeah it was it's, it had to be as snotty and as dro drooly and 
you know, I had an eye infection from crawling on the floor in that bathroom because the crew is like going to the bathroom and then like, you know, walking all in there and we've got our faces like, it was just mad, it was gross. And the toilet, you know, my tip to old Danny Ball, we had to do a British toilet joke with the... So that was peanut butter and chocolate, so don't worry. Um, but, uh, yeah. Sorry. I just feel like it's up. a miracle that you all survived this. <laughs> I'm losing them, aren't I now? So I'm losing them. No, you're not. You're not. Everyone, I, I mean, I think I, I, for me watching this, I would definitely never even imagine all of this stuff happening. It seems so, it's like so high energy. Can you talk about like what the key to keeping up that pace, it's kind of relentless, and that's one of the things I love about it, but it doesn't really sacrifice any of the characters. Can you talk about how you achieved that? It's pretty hard pounding. Yeah, I think it's just like my, I'm like a Energizer Bunny, aren't I? <laughs> I think that, yeah, but it, yeah, it's like, I guess like my feeling as an actor is what I'm trying to create in the camera. So like those fights and like really being uncomfortably tight or like feeling those moments of like India is a land of juxtaposition. It's like, you know, extreme noise and heat and then like absolute, you know, you can be in these like vacuums, you know, and, it, and for me it's like, how can we achieve that in the film and have, you know, th these things coincide. You've got this kind of like sweaty armpit of this wrestling ring. And then you've got this beautiful club, you know, with wood panel, you know, and chandeliers and, caviar and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's just trying to highlight those kind of um uh contrasts and you know try and make a resourceful hero that you know doesn't have all the tools and answers and he's you know befriending a little puppy that can you know provide a new avenue and he's constantly just you know trying to do things that are resourceful so i don't know if i answered that question i feel like um oh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. how you made this movie the, yeah. the character yeah. the way he's working is Especially with this puppy, I was literally thinking, what about the puppy? <laughs> I mean, that's a genius idea. Get your dog assistant to work. Yeah. Um, they're going to get very mad at me if I don't kick us out of here, but I want to say congratulations to everyone on the feet of Mary.